That was the beginning of a work by a camarada Nova called Wawa Te Wak, uh, Northern Lights. Uh, that's from a piece of music that came out, uh, I guess, about uh, eight years ago or so. And uh, I played it for you because while we don't have the newest work yet by uh, Camerata Nova, it's going to be uh, the world premiere is happening this evening at the uh, New Music Festival. And uh, the new, uh, the newest work is called uh, Take the Indian, and it is a work by Camerata Nova written by Andrew Balfour. Now, Camerata Nova is a vocal group uh, that's been around since 1996. They uh, perform as, as they say, without fear. They perform Renaissance music, Abor- Aboriginal-infused, and contemporary music, often singing a cappella. The group also enjoys accompanying uh, didgeridoos, uh, crystal bowls, and all different kinds of percussive instruments as well. And they continue to push the boundaries and the envelope of, uh, con- of uh, contemporary choral music. And I have uh, with me in the studio Andrew Balfour, who's the artistic director of the group. He's the founder, conceptual creator, and the artistic director of Camera de Nova. And in addition to uh, extensive choral experience, Andrew's uh, become a very serious, well, serious, you know, I don't mean it in a, in a harsh word. He's uh, <laughs> a very important, I think you can say, uh, composer and arranger here uh, from Manitoba. And, uh, but that reaches uh, well beyond our borders. So he's written a new piece called Take the Indian that's going to be premiered this evening with uh, the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra as part of the New Music Festival. And I welcome him uh, into the studio with me this morning. Hey, Andrew, how are you? I'm fine. Thanks for having me here. It's a pleasure. Uh, I was mentioning earlier that I had uh, Ross Brownlee mm-hmm. from your group in uh, last time. So it's nice to have you in, uh, in yes. this morning to uh, chat about the new work. Um, you uh, mentioned... When I read some notes about this piece, that it's been something you've been thinking about for a while now. When did you begin thinking about writing this uh, particular piece? Um, officially, I guess it was a year ago. The The Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra had uh, approached me about uh, wanting to commission me to write a piece in conjunction with the New Music Festival, along with the opening of the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. Um, and I've been actually thinking about this uh, particular idea of of missing children for some time. In fact, the piece that you just started out this interview with Wawatewak is kind of the beginning early seeds uh, of that idea of missing missing ch- uh, children, lost tribes, lost peoples. So this was a good opportunity, I think, to actually finally to delve into the subject matter of the residential school re- legacy, um, the idea of missing children, um, the hundreds uh, of, of, of missing uh, Aboriginal women across the country that just have vanished. So it was a, obviously an idea that was struck deep with me and I think should strike deep within society. But at the same time, I think I was only ready to do it now in my terms of uh, career as a, uh, as a, as a composer, as, a, as an observer. Um, I only felt I could able to delve into, into the subject matter right now. So um, it's been uh, quite a, a process over the last uh, couple of months to get ready for this moment It's for tonight. Um, I wrote the music for this in uh, August of last year. Around the same time that uh, that uh, the Tina Fontaine, uh, uh, the young wo- the girl that was uh, her body was discovered in the river, actually, and that was kind of a poignant time for me, and uh, really actually drove home the fact that this was important work that I was writing. Mm-hmm. Now uh, you say you wrote the music at that time as well. When did the, when did the lyrics come into play? Because I mean, when uh, I read through the lyrics, um, there's a lot of heavy heavy uh, yes. stuff in the lyrics. Um, when do, when were you able to put the music and the lyrics together? I think that that took a while, actually. And it's, for me, it's always, I usually start with music. I'm not sure how other composers do it, but for me, it's usually the music first. I did know that always I was going to include testimony from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And I was at the Winnipeg uh, testimony uh, back in 2012 when I actually, that seed was planted in terms of I'm, I must find a way to express this musically because it was the most powerful three and a half hours that I had probably witnessed in terms of personal testimony of the, of the people, the survivors that were, were speaking in such a, a straightforward, almost non-emotional tone about such hor- horrific things that had happened to them when they were children. They had been through the gamut of emotion. So um, I thought their words, just, just their words, even if you read them on paper, um, very powerful. So that's what I wanted to add in, in terms of the, the lyrics that you hear in the text tonight. Things like, they took away my heritage. <clears throat> they cut my hair. They talked of paradise with a whip. You know, they came to me at night. All these little really powerful phrases, I think. I've tried to express that in the power and the drama of not only the music, but the, the movement that's happening on stage. 
Um, how 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 difficult it is? It's I mean you you get wrapped up in the in in the piece as well. And are you able to keep some a, a sort of a distance from it, or do you find that you get really involved in the emotions and uh, mm. you know of the of the words themselves? That's a really good question. In this particular piece. I think that myself and all the performers tonight are really going deep. Uh, and now I actually understand how hard it is for actors to really have to go deep into themselves. And I think that there's a fine balance. I'm not an actor, obviously. I, I've never done anything like this before in terms of what I'm doing on stage while the music is happening and what all the singers are doing. Um, but you're, it, it's a very dangerous sometimes in terms of going too deep. Um, obviously, I go deep when I'm writing it, but I've, in terms of the, usually when I go deep into writing, and then I, later when I hear the performance, it's a very satisfying and very pleasant experience for me because I can sit, sit back or conduct a, a piece of music. But this time, I've written kind of like this vortex of a dark hole, mm -hmm. and you know you have to be careful in terms of going too deep. And I, I do feel that I have to go deep because I have to, uh, along with the other performers with Camera Nova, we're actually really exposing ourselves in a very vulnerable way. But that's the, that's the whole purpose of, the, of this statement. Was there also a, a hope for catharsis and some sort of reconciliation with the music itself in, in terms of, um, uh, I guess, going through all the emotions and then having the release towards the end? As you say, when you hear the piece live, it's almost like hearing it from a different perspective mm -hmm. from when you're writing it. Is there hope that um, there will be some sort of you know, reconciliation after the music? I would hope so, but at the same time, I have written in terms of like this is ha a harsh and raw piece and at the end it finishes in a harsh and ra raw way um yes i personally feel that there, there sh uh, i feel hope in my life and hope that things uh can uh, get better for a lot of lost people um but uh it's it's hard because it particularly at the end we're really it's it's pretty bleak um but i think this bleakness has to be presented in a way for people to to see um, whether or not people get it or not, you know, I'm not sure. But I, I personally feel hope. But uh, a lot of these people we're singing and, and observing are, are live in a, a world without hope, which is one of the reasons that they've fallen so far away from the general community. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, in, in the performance of the piece. I mean, obviously the lyrics and the music are important, but there's, there's, you said there's more to it when there's a. Per what, what is the performance involved on stage? We have actually divided uh, the choir up to several, several sections. Um, all the tenors and basses, for instance, are called the chorus of crows. Um, and the, uh, the Aboriginals, uh, several hundred years ago, when they first saw priests, they were all in black cassocks and they called them crows because when they were speaking a strange language, they, their behavior was very odd. And to them, they associated that with crows. And I find that very poetically beautiful um, in terms of the, the description of that. So all the men in, on, perform, on stage are actually very menacing. They are in black cassocks. Um, they're actually chanting, come thou little Indian, come, you know, come with me type of idea. So it's very, very ominous and menacing. Um, we have the sopranos that are actually dressed in residential uniforms um, who represent the children of that time being taken away from their community, being taken away from their families, and put into these huge, massive stone buildings that were cold and very forbo foreboding and lonely for them and very confusing. They couldn't speak their language anymore. You know, they had, they, they had to get their hair cut. They were beaten. All these different things that were horrible. Um, and then we have the altos, actually, who are our voices of the survivors, survivors now. Um, Angela Neufeld, actually, is our, is our alto soloist who is... Um, also expressing in a very deep way losing her heritage or getting her hair cut and different ideas like that. So we have all these different groups, but at the same time, everybody, again, it's like it's like a big sort of one-act play in terms of there's different things happening on stage. And then I have myself, who is actually on one side of the stage, uh, around a broken drum and not being allowed to touch that drum because of constantly the, 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 uh, the crows are saying, get away from that drum, don't touch that drum. So it's, uh, and I go deep into it in terms of like the addictions that are out there, the powerful, powerful uh, substance problems that are actually driving young kids to knife each other and to, to lose without hope and the violence and the never ending circle that it, that it causes. It's very, very dangerous in this city and blocks away from every, you know, where we all work downtown. There are some serious dramas happening on a daily basis. So we're trying to, you know, it sounds very deep and harsh, but we're trying to actually open up that portal. So, uh, you know, we had a rehearsal last night and it really was powerful. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, in the studio with me right now is Andrew Balfour, the Artistic Director of Camera Nova, and we're talking about the piece that's going to be premiered tonight as part of the new music festival. It's called Take the Indian. Um, I, 
just a few minutes before you came in, I was playing an interview that I had with uh, a gentleman from Voices 8, a group, mm -hmm. and we talked about the human voice. And uh, he, he, he said, and, and I wanted to ask you about this, but he said it's the ultimate instrument of mm -hmm. human expression. So is that one of the reasons that you've sort of stuck so close to choral music throughout your uh, life? Is that one of the, is that what drives you as well with the human voice? Absolutely. Um, I have always loved choral music since I was old enough to recognize music. Um, and I've been singing it since I was seven years old in a pretty uh, official and uh, great way to sort of in terms of choirs. Um, and I've always loved the sound of not just the single human voice, but voices coming together. Um, I, I personally, my background is a love of Renaissance music. So Monteverdi and Palestrina and Gisualdo, that stuff is, is my meat and potatoes in terms of what really uh, drives me and wants to, you know, to continue to sing choral music. And then, of course, Bach is, is my god. And, and, you know, I love singing Bach because it just brings people together. But in, in contemporary music, I think the composers, especially in the last 100 years, have really taken it to a different level in terms of expression. For instance, the other piece that Cam Radanov is singing to, uh, tonight is Partita by Carolyn Shaw from New York, who's a Pulitzer Prize winning composer. She won a Grammy for this award for her, her group A Room Full of Teeth. And it is an entirely, I call it the Cirque du Soleil of vocal uh, performance, because our group is really doing acrobatics, uh, extended vocal techniques. It's really astounding to, to, to witness and to watch, actually, because it really is a People are bringing new ideas to the human voice, and that's saying something because we've been singing for since we discovered fire, probably. So it's just amazing how people are still changing things up and mixing it up. So I find you're right; the human voice is still remains to me the most powerful form of human expression. Mm -hmm. And we'll uh, we'll hear some of that tonight. I'm, I'm assuming on stage. So yes, with yes this definitely. new work, and uh, not only is it a powerful work, but uh, I mean, you guys have, as you say, been performing together for so long. You must it must be uh, comfortable to be up there together. It is. I mean, although, it, again, just the nature of sort of the, our group, it, it's always changing up. We always have new people, but I think they always bring something new to it. Mm -hmm. And I have to definitely mention that the most important thing, I think, to me right now is the fact that even though we're performing on a stage and, and there's a powerful moment, that we have a leader up there, and his name is Mel Braun, and he is the best person to collaborate for a composer, I, fi I find. It's amazing, his, his, uh, not only his, his spirit when he brings to a work like this, but his openness and his willing to experiment and have great ideas. Um, and I really have to say that he's been, he is the engine that's driving everything on stage. You know, he's just giving cues and giving ideas. And it's been, he's a former teacher of mine at University of Manitoba. And I just feel it's such an honor to be able, at this point in my career, to be able to work with him as a colleague and for his openness and enthusiasm. So Mel has been really uh, amazing this, uh, this past couple of uh, weeks. And also, he's a very important member of Camerad and Nova's family. Mm -hmm. And of course, you Camerad and Nova has their own concert season that goes throughout the year as well. So you're busy yes. with that. And yeah, it's and ironic. Just, uh, usually, uh, January is our, our slow. <laughs> is our slow month. We usually do, we don't have any rehearsals. But of course, with my piece in the Partita by Carolyn Shaw, we've been really going really hard all <clears throat> well, actually, the last two couple of months. But it's definitely been a busy January. Mm -hmm. Well, Andrew, congratulations on uh, getting this piece premiered tonight. Thank you very um, much. Best of luck to you guys on and. Um, it's uh, again. It's going to be a powerful work, and I think one that hopefully people will take away from some a message as well. And even if it, you know, I mean, it's a subject that is probably very well known. Mm -hmm. But it, I mean, you can, I guess, you can never really bring it to light too uh, too often, and you know, until people realize that there is, you know, take notice. Right? Absolutely, that is mm -hmm. the hope. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to play you a, a, a little bit more from the CD called Wawa Te Wak because we just don't have that music yet of the new ones. You have to go tonight <laughs> to see it. If you don't have your tickets, uh, you can still get them at wso.ca. Uh, they have their own website, WSO, what is it, NMF? I, 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 yeah, WNMF. WNMF. Yeah. Dot CA. Yeah. Dot CA. WNMF dot CA. And you can go see the uh, premiere of that piece tonight. Um, so again, here's a little bit more music from the uh, CD by Camerata Nova uh, called Northern Lights Wawa Tewak. <laughs> 